The Skull Bro Show. We're, We're back. back. We're back. We're episode back. episode two. Episode yeah. two. Back to back. This, uh, we're going to talk about health, wealth, and happiness. In these first episodes, we're going to focus predominantly on health because health is the foundation for a quality life. And uh, if you don't have your health, you don't have uh, you don't have anything. Um, for those of you who don't know me, a little story about me. Uh, a great lesson I learned is I was going to college. I, I walked on to Florida Atlantic University's tennis team my freshman year, made the team, and I was having a good season. Um, we were playing uh, University of Central Florida in Orlando, and I'll never forget, I went back to hit an overhead, and my back just lit up on fire, and finish the match, lose the match, this little Norwegian guy, um, and uh, back just the back pain just keeps getting worse, and keeps getting worse, and didn't do anything about it first, of course, waited until it was so bad I couldn't play anymore, then I go see my athletic trainer, Try electric stim, ultrasound, ice, heat, massage, and nothing is working. Nothing working, and it's weeks and weeks go by. And it taught me the most amazing lesson is that I'm here. I am. I'm living literally a mile from the beach in Boca Raton, Florida, and I'm playing a Division One college sport, which had always been a dream of mine. And I'm miserable. I'm in so much pain. I can't sleep. I can't study. I can't play tennis. And you know how I love to study. <laughs> And, and I remember, seriously, I remember one night lying in bed just crying because uh, I was just so, so awful. And I went home, and, and our, our father, who's a chiropractor, checked me out, adjusted me. And I wasn't perfect, but it was better. And I remember the hope that gave me. And I knew then and there, I'd always thought I'll be a chiropractor. And right then and there, I knew, like, that's what I want to do. I want to help people be healthier because if you don't have that, nothing else matters, guys. So today we're going to get into stress. Uh, and I'm going to just start off real briefly. Stress, you know, can come in basically three forms. And anytime you want to get healthy, you got to look at basically three things, physical, chemical, emotional. Then I'm going to let my brother, Dr. Paxton, he's a chiropractor in Phoenix, Arizona. For those of you who don't know him, and I'm a chiropractor up in uh, West Bend, Wisconsin. I'm going to let him get into it, and then I'll, I'll probably interrupt him a few times. Yeah, you're going to let me talk? I know. Uh, no, this episode's me. He's just – he's actually <laughs> – <laughs> <laughs> he's not. Yeah, uh, so go ahead, man. I know you got plenty. And for those of you who don't know, as you'll see, he's the detailed one. I'm like the Cliff's Notes guy, and I think it'll be a good combo. So why don't you go ahead and uh, get into it? Yeah. So I mean, when we're talking about stress, you know, really the whole goal of uh, of any form of life is to adapt to the different stresses, whether external or internal. Um, mm-hmm. And so. You know, that's that's what we're talking about with stress. Some is good, some is bad, uh, depending on how it stimulates you and how you perceive it. You know, yeah. there's really two two types uh, of stress. One's kind of, you know, emotional, uh, and the other is environmental. So one's internal, how you feel uh, and respond, and one's external in terms of how it's going to be uh, stimulating you to adapt. And mm-hmm. health, health really is adapting appropriate to the situation you're in whether yeah. that's internal or external so yeah. you know with emotional stress we have the big component of that is perceived stress yeah it's how are you perceiving the events around you whether you know you optimistic compared to pessimistic yeah do you see you know as a as a challenge where you're like sherlock holmes and you're going to be like you know, excited about a challenge or is this like shit, you know, again, here we go again. (laughs) Yeah. Um, As a doctor, you know, this is one of the hardest things to help people with because it's so personal. Um, and sometimes it's so silly. Like you get cut off in traffic. It's not a big deal. And one person, a will freak out, get pissed off. So your sympathetic nervous system fires, your digestion shuts down, your immune system shuts down. And, and then you go to your work and you tell two or three people the story. You get pissed off again. Then you come home and you tell your spouse the story and you get pissed off again. And your sympathetic nervous system, your adrenals, they're just firing all day long. And you're chronically suppressing your immune system, your digestion on an event that really wasn't a big deal. And then person B gets cut off in traffic and goes, oh, that person must have been in a rush. And boom, it has no effect on their body. So perception of the of what's going on in your life is massive. Yeah, no, that's huge. You know, I explain it in a way as well where 
two people have a cup of coffee in the morning. You know, one person, or they both spill it. One person freaks out, ruins the whole rest of their day. Yeah. The other person goes, all right, I'll clean it up and pour myself a new cup of coffee. No big deal. Yeah. Yep. And internally, that, that changes everything on everything. how you look at the same event or how two different people look at the same exact thing that occurred. Yep. You know, so and then the other side of stress is environmental stress. So there's, you know, toxicity in terms mm -hmm. of or, or like pollution or, you know, things you're taking in and then nutrition, which is going to be good in terms of uh, the, the chemical, uh, both of those being kind of chemical things. Um, then you also have the number one pollution that we're all dealing with, actually, that no one suspects, which is light pollution. Um, and we're bombarded by it today, and it throws off okay. our circadian rhythm, which then throws off our hormones. Um, yep. And it's, it's one of the biggest detriments to health today uh, because it's our smartphones, it's our computers, it's TV, it's the lights uh, around, the street lights. Um, you know, the light bulb has been around for a hundred plus years, but we haven't been bombarded by light uh, like we have in the last 50, you know, or so years. And, and that's a huge stress uh, to the system because historically, oh, historically, we've, you know, worked with the sun. Um, and so that was our main light source. And now we're getting that that artificial light that's stimulating that side of things. And, you know, that which. Really, the end is it disrupts sleep. And sleep yeah. is just a precious thing when your body can truly focus on itself and heal, uh, heal and, and restore. And then, you know, and, and with guard that is uh, in the environmental is life, lifestyle stress. The people you hang out with, the different things oh, you man. do. Are you yeah. sitting all day or are you moving? Yeah. Um, are really? you yeah. getting into nature um, are different things. Are you living through... You know the Kardashians. That's you know yeah. you're, you're living through <laughs> That's them. That's stressful. That's stressful. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Oh man, there's nothing more I hated than that show. <laughs> that was, my wife and we were dating. Loved that show, and I didn't know if our relationship would get through it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we, we did some counseling, and and she doesn't watch it anymore. So now we're doing better. All right. <laughs> good, I know, good lesson I just, for me to quickly, learn. This light stuff, guys, is huge. Blue light basically disrupts how your uh, how your body secretes melatonin. Your pineal gland secretes melatonin, and melatonin is this basically the sleep hormone is the easiest way to describe it. And so when you're constantly – and you figure the average person today, you go sit all day and you stare at a computer screen. Um and we're just it, so blocking out the blue light at night. Um, there's red glasses you can get two to wear that will block out blue light at night to help your body secrete melatonin. There's you can put your computer at different. Uh, you control the type of light. You can block certain light on your computer screen too to help deal with some of that. And then getting up during the workday and moving around a little bit is really really beneficial for you. Yeah, and I just I just I'd like to say this show's okay to watch. It's the other shows that you got to turn <laughs> off. <laughs> positive. Is it positive or is it just a bunch of people running around talking about nonsense? Uh, so, but, so let's get into some uh, things, uh, some tips uh, yeah. you know, that you can implement in your life to help uh, um, respond to stress. Because, again, you're not going to get away from it. It's not about getting away from it completely. It's how do you respond and what do you do in your life to yep. deal with it. Yep. Um, and so the first one is reducing its impact. Yeah. Um, cause there's things, you know, that you aren't going to be able to get away from and, and some you are, but you know, reducing its impact in this realm would be getting away, you know, learn to say no to things. You don't have to do everything. Uh, you don't have to hang out with everybody. you got to value your time and yourself and, learn to say no to different things that aren't going to honor you aren't going to benefit you um and that's that's a tough thing to do it's oh, hugely yeah. tough it sounds i mean all this will be sound very simple yeah but actually, yeah, I, I actually doing it is is tough oh, but but yeah that's the that's the first you know and then stop another tip would be stop watching the news turn that off that is just negativity and most of it you have 
you can't do anything about it. Uh, yeah. You can't change it. So spend your time focusing on the things you can actually change in your life and turn off all that negativity that you can't do anything about. Yeah. Um, and that will change your physiology because it just makes you worry. And worrying does nothing for you, especially if you don't, you can't, you can't actually do anything about it or change it. Um, the next thing would be with social media and then just uh, people Control. around you. You know, stop having pointless arguments where you just know you're not going to win. Stop debating on social media. I've done this a lot in my life. <laughs> oh, if you too. know me, you know oh, I've done too. a lot of this. But yeah. I eventually realized, you know, n no, none of these people were changing. I was no. stressing <laughs> myself out and nothing, they weren't changing. So why that am one I... Facebook comment from Paxton Schofield really changed my life. <laughs> now, yeah. now I believe Corella is good for me. No, I know. It's message it's, I, it's, I never got. <laughs> it's so easy to get stuck in that and you're just arguing and fighting with people. And yeah, if there's someone who's an asshole, just defriend them. Uh, just like you would in real life. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just <laughs> defriend them digitally. So you're not dealing with that nonsense. That's a big, a big, big thing. If you really want to have a positive life, you got to be really mindful of who you're around. Because if you're around negativity, it's like secondhand smoke. It takes, a, it, it takes effect. Negativity takes effect um, whether you think it does or not. Yeah, it's addictive. It's infectious. Um, you know, and so it's, it's, a, uh, it's a huge stress to the system. Yeah. Um, so... And then, you know, other things is just reducing stress for the stuff you really can't avoid that you, you know, you're going to have to deal with. Um, one aspect of that is, you know, practice acceptance of, of something. So if you're at a store and you're in line, like you're not going to be able to change that. So don't let it stress you out. Yeah. Just accept that you're in line and it <laughs> is what it is, you know. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, the person uh, cutting you off like you use, you know, like it happens, yeah. um, you know, and just accept it uh, with that, that stuff that you're not going to be able to change. doesn't mean you don't take action, like learn to go to that store when there's not a line. Um, don't get me wrong. But when you're in that actual moment, just, you know, learn to accept it and not don't let it stress you out. Um, another thing you can do at the end of the day is start a gratitude journal. So, yeah. At the end of the day, when you're, you know, sitting down, look back on your day and find things that you're happy about, that you can be grateful uh, in your life. You know, you can always find something like, you know, you had clean water that, you know, that yeah. doesn't happen everywhere. So no doubt. You can definitely be grateful for that. You know, you can brushing your teeth, you know, these little things you can, you know, change your energy by just saying, wow, you know, I'm actually lucky to have this in my life. Um, yeah, and, and, and essentially what you're doing there is controlling your focus, right? You can focus on the part, and this is so easy to talk about, right? You know, <laughs> when you're, it's one of those things, and I remember, you know, at different times in my life where someone dies or you're having a hard time getting pregnant or stuff's going on with your practice, insurance companies are changing. So it's so easy to be like, oh, yeah, just control your focus, but it's, it, it's so important. And it really is just making a conscious decision to focus on the good in your life. And essentially every self-help person, coach I've ever, they all have like a way to start your day and end your day. And, and, and the, that's why they talk about the gratitude journal. Writing down three things you're grateful for at the beginning of your day um, and, and at the end of your day is basically about controlling your focus because it's impossible to be thankful and pissed off at the same time. So... And this is something I do with every team meeting. When we have a team meeting, everyone on the team has to do one win they've had that week, so something good that happened in their life. And I don't care if every time they say, you know, I, I got to eat three meals each day. That's fine. And one thing they're grateful for. So every time, one thing you're grateful for, and that again, focus. And if they say my health or my family every single time, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's the same thing. As long as you're controlling your focus and you're focusing on the good in your life, it's a beneficial tool. And so doing that is huge. And I've done that at different times in my life. Just start my day, get up. What are three things I'm thankful for? Finish my day. What are three wins? What are three good things that happened to me today? You know, and, and not focusing on the one or two, you know, in the office, some patients don't like me. So I can either go home and I can say, oh, you know, Mary really didn't like what I do. 
But then there's all these other people that love what I do. So if just making the conscious decision this, and it's so, it's, it's very, it takes a lot of mental discipline, but just focusing on the people that like me and, and want to come to my practice instead of the one person that doesn't like what I do. You know, and it's, it, that's the whole idea with the gratitude journals and all this. And I'll go in and later in the video and I'll, I'll talk about how I like to start my days. But that is key, man. Just focus on the good in your life. You know, just to say, I could relate to, you know, some of those people don't like you uh, in times <laughs> yeah. of my life. Just, you know, so I can, I can kind of understand that here and there. <laughs> I didn't say they were wrong. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't say they were wrong. <laughs> so, and then last thing in terms of emotional stress, reframing. Yeah. Um, reframe what's happening around you. So, for instance, if you got a long commute in the morning to and from work, you know, utilize that time to benefit you. Listen to an audio yeah. book. Listen yes. to a podcast. Or worst of all, listen to a comedy. You know, something yeah. that at least something makes positive. you laugh. Yeah. yeah. So Learn another language. What are your interests? And just use those. And use exactly use that time, and you'll see so many times in your life the challenges. And I've seen this in my own life. And our, our father has an amazing story where he was playing professional rugby in Italy, and he got his finger kicked, uh, and it just snapped his finger in half. This bone pushed through the skin. They took him to the emergency room, had a surgery, didn't go well, got an infection. They almost amputated his arm. The infection got so bad. Had two more surgeries, didn't work. His dad, our grandfather, who was a medical doctor, flew him back to South Africa, had like whatever, the top surgeon operate. It was a success. But because he went back, he ran into this guy, Steve Hillock, and then he sent him to chiropractic school. And my dad will tell you it was the best thing that ever happened to him. So, so many times in life, the challenges are really, it's an opportunity to learn. It's an opportunity to grow. And so you just, that's the whole reframe is changing how you look at it. Like, okay. This has happened a few times or, or this just happened. How can this, you know, what can I do to make this productive? How can this benefit me? And it's, you'll see all the time those challenges will, will so many times be blessings. Well, and that was, you know, the greatest event in our lives because we wouldn't be here yeah, no if it doubt. wasn't for that as yeah. well. But, Glad that guy kicked his hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh -huh. But okay, and then let's go into uh, environmental uh, aspect and things you can do for that. First, okay. and you'll hear us talk about this all the time, is nutrition and eating real food, oh, eating man. nutrient dense foods. So something that has yeah. a lot of nutrients and a lower co uh, caloric intake compared to the opposite of what most people are doing. Um, you know, you could add Wuji Corral and spirulina, they're whole yeah. foods, so they're a. Uh, real simple way of adding it in an easy you don't have to change a lot you just got to go to wujistore.com and buy a couple uh <laughs> packs i'd appreciate it um but you know in terms of nu nutrients to look at b uh, b vitamins vitamin c potassium calcium zinc magnesium um but you should be looking at whole foods to get these you know don't go and just supplement right away work on getting yeah you gotta real eat food Eat real food, food that goes bad, that's not frozen or microwaved. If it doesn't go bad on the shelf, it's not going to break down in your stomach. You need to eat food that's alive and drink some water. I can't tell you how many of my patients drink a half a cup of water today or no water at all. It's just take your body weight, 200 pounds, divide in half. You need 100 ounces of water a day if you're a 200-pound person. If you're a 100-pound person, you need 50 ounces of water a day minimum. If you're active, then you need to go way up. And I, so you've got to get water and whole, real live food, fruits, vegetables, good clean meats. Uh, so get that stuff, guys. Shop on the outside of the grocery store where stuff goes bad. So, go ahead. No, oh, yeah, and that hydration is key because none of these nutrients can work as well as they should if they're not if you're not well hydrated. Because seventy percent of Americans are dehydrated. Seventy percent. So. But, okay, and then moving on, uh, sleep. Disruption of your circadian rhythm is just, I mean, I don't know. I, don't I would say, ever you know, disrupt my circadian rhythm. Yeah. Well, you know me. Yeah. <laughs> you can sleep on a cactus. Yeah, so, <laughs> don't, you know, this is why I'm very passionate about this subject uh, specifically. You can go to sleep right now if you wanted to. <laughs> you know, I had to slap myself a little bit before we started this to, to wake up. So, but, um, you know, 
the issue with that is too much uh, too much light exposure at night and not enough real light exposure during the day. A um, couple tips is avoid you know electronic screens and as much artificial light as possible two to three hours before going to bed. Yeah. Um, you can get some red uh, glasses which will uh, help block the blue wave light, which is yep. which is the the issue um, when it comes to the light exposure. Uh, also in the morning. Uh, get some real light, get outside and get the sun in your life. Um, you know, or if you're in the Northern, you know, area of the world where this, you know, in the winter time, yep, there you go <laughs> in the Wisconsin, you can get a light machine to help, uh, stimulate that. And, and they've been shown to help with the seasonal affective disorder, uh, yeah. as well. So if you've ever experienced that really focus on getting some real light into your life. Um, the other thing is make sleep a priority. Um, on average, uh, it's about seven to nine. That's average. Some people can go off less than that. Other people need more. You got to figure that out for yourself, but that's a good area to, to reference for, for most people. Um, and then, uh, in the bedroom, you really just use your bedroom for sleep and sex. Uh, don't do nice. anything else there. You know, I mean, I don't know about you. You're married, so maybe I'm married. Maybe maybe that's decreased. Sleep, but, sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, have that be the only things you do in your bedroom. Um, if it's on the computer, all that TV, do that outside of the bedroom. So um, when you're in bed, you're sleeping or enjoying yourself. Uh, and then you know, lastly, avoid stimulating conversations or movies or books before you you go to bed because that's going to wake you up um if you're you know it's addictive type book uh you know do that at some other time during the day uh, because you're gonna it's gonna wake you up you're gonna have a harder time uh falling asleep yep cool yeah so with the chemical stressors a couple things i always teach people sweeteners are a huge problem in our pro so that'll stress your body out it'll suppress your immune system so cut down the sweeteners uh, like we talked about, cut down the energy drinks, guys. No energy drinks. If you need it, get some green tea or get a nice quality cup of coffee with some coconut oil or some whole milk, just a little bit, and, and, and just yeah, – but not those energy drinks. And, and for the sleep, the sleep is massive. You know, you hear all the time, I'll sleep when I'm dead. You're going to die sooner, okay? Six to eight hours or nine, no less than six though, no less than six. And if you can take 20 minutes in the middle of the day, lay down. I do this every day. I meditate for about a half hour every day, and we'll get into meditation. It's so big for me personally. Um, I like to meditate a few times a day to just calm the mind down. It's absolutely uh, is huge, 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 huge. So, sorry, keep going. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, you know, meditation is huge. You know, it's been around for thousands and thousands of years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Now science is showing it's beneficial. So now you got the green light to actually do it. Um, but you know, thousands of years in yes. practice. Has, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, you know, whatever. Yeah. Well, either way, let's move on. Um, so, and then the last thing in terms of environment is, which is huge in today's world. I mean, I, we can't even stress this enough, but it's just bad posture and sitting for hours and hours a day. Yep. Um, it's just, it's the new smoking. Um, yep. they have shown that it literally had, you know, increases your risk of, of heart attacks, increases, uh, or decreases your lifespan. Um, and it's something that builds up over a long time. So you're not aware of the damage that's yeah. occurring, um, until the, the straw breaks the camel's back, uh, for instance. So, yep. you know, get out and move, uh, work on the, you know, the 10,000 steps, you know, just we're built to move. We're not. Another, Go ahead. Yeah. No, another reason, guys, that's really big is your, your lymph, your white blood cells, they have no organ to pump them. They don't have a heart that pumps blood. They don't have lungs, which pump oxygen. The only way lymph gets pumped is muscle contraction moves lymph. So moving is one of the best things you can do for your immune system. If you don't move, you get lymphostasis. Your lymph doesn't move and lymph's what goes through and it's the little like navy seals that kill viruses and kill bacteria and kill cancer cells so you got to get up and move yeah i mean we're built to move well, you know yep. most of our neurology deals with movement yes um 
And so if that's the case, then we're designed to move and not sit in a chair um, all day at work and then go home and sit on the couch yeah, exactly. uh, type of deal. So, and lastly, you know, take time for yourself. You cannot be the best version of yourself unless for other people, for your kids, for your friends, for your family, unless you take some time for yourself. You know, you can start small uh, with that, but make it a priority. Make it a priority in your life because it's huge for everyone else that you interact with. Um, we talked about meditation uh, as one of those things for self-care. Yoga, Tai Chi, uh, Qigong. Uh, breathing. Thing. Those breathing, those deep. Now, the movement, too, and the stretching so good, but then that deep diaphragmatic breathing pumps length 30 times more than a chest breath. So just that deep diaphragmatic breathing. And then when you're the diaphragm's involved, it taps into the parasympathetic nervous system. That's the part of the nervous system that, co that controls resting, digesting, healing, calming the body down. The sympathetic is the one, the fight or flight. When you get pissed off, the fight or flight fires. So that deep breathing uh, is so big. Um, and that's why I'm a huge yoga person, huge, huge yoga person. And that's a great way to, to keep your body uh, in good shape. Yeah, you know, and another big thing that doesn't cost you any money typically uh, is get out in nature. Yeah. You know, it's... They, it, the that's one that's almost hard to explain. It's like you can't really explain it until you get into the woods or you go by a lake or the ocean and you're out there and you're just like, there's something just very calming about it. No, I mean, it's just, it's huge and it doesn't, it's not going to really cost you if you just, you know, take a little trip and, and the physiological benefit is huge. We're a part of nature. We need to be in nature from time yeah. to time. So, yeah. And then, you know, last couple is social support. Have positive people around you, but have people that you can communicate with, that you trust, so you can uh, have that interaction of, of uh, conversations for things you're dealing with that aren't going to judge you uh, for that, that are going to support you and help you, who love you. Yeah. Um, and so really try to find and, and get more of those people uh, in your life. And then lastly, you know, massage, acupuncture, seeing a chiropractor will oh, help huge. decrease this physiological stress and help you relax and calm down. Yeah, I mean, the, the chiropractic part, I know we're both chiropractors, obviously we love chiropractic, but it's huge. It's huge because you think your posture if you're, if my atlas goes out, say I birth or a fall or playing football, rugby, whatever you're, now your head's off center and your body's got to go, it sits like that. It stands like that. It walks like that. So you figure, say if a hundred percent of your energy is designed to hold you up and now you're out of alignment, it might be 70, 80% of your energy is dedicated to just holding you up. It's a homeostatic drain. It just drains your body of the fuel it needs to maintain balance. And so instead of, say, 50 joules of energy being required, now it's 80. And so now your body will shunt energy away from important resources. Your body has a hierarchy. You know, heart pumping, lungs going, these, are, these have to happen. You know, keeping your body up against gravity, you can't fall over. It has to happen. So then your immune system, fighting off cancer cells, little things like that, aren't to your body that important. Well, because it's not going to kill you right now. So that's how posture long term can be devastating. And that's and, he, and I'm not, trust me, I know all chiropractors are not the same. There are some terrible ones out there. So if you're if you're trying to find a good one, let us know, and we'll do our best to find one in your area. Uh, but a quality chiropractor that's going to help you get that body nice and balanced and minimize the amount of stress that gravity is going to take on you is huge, 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 huge. And then physically, yoga, or tai chi, a couple days a week. And then high intensity training, you know, waving is lots of times what it's called and it's designed, you want to spike your heart rate and then let it recover and then spike your heart rate and let it recover. You want about 90 seconds of exertion and then about five minutes of rest. So you want to get your heart rate up over about 100 and then come down and like up over 120 and do that about five to six times, take you about half an hour. If you do the rest, let it, rest, let it rest so your heart rate comes all the way down to neutral. And do that two to three times a week and then also do some yoga, some tai chi, some breathing, stretching exercises. And then if you want to do some running on top of that or some cardio, then that's fine. But really focus on – and you can be 80. There's 80-year-olds that do that. Get on a bike. Get on an elliptical and just spike the heart rate. Let it recover. Spike the heart rate. Let it recover. 
Uh, and then, yeah, you can do whatever else. Some strength training is always good. Just don't hurt yourself, guys. Take your ego out of the equation. You know, unless Nike's going to get rid of your contract, don't worry about it. You know, so just you're designed to keep your body moving. And then chemically, lots of water. Chlorella sparingly, they have detox properties. So it's a minor detoxification of your body, which is really important. There's so much pollution in the air now that we never dealt with before and all kinds of different stuff. Drink water and then try to get good quality cleansed water. You don't want fluoride in your water. Fluoride blocks um, the uptake of uh, iodine. They have the same valence electrons. So your thyroid has a hard time of taking in iodine if you take a lot of fluoride. So no fluoride in the water. Don't worry about cavities. Just don't eat a lot of sugar. Um, so good, clean water. No sweeteners or minimal sweeteners. And we practice, and we, maybe we'll do an episode on this, the five on, two off. Five days a week, do healthy. Two days a week, party, have fun, do whatever. Drink your soda, drink your beer. But it's what you do most of the time that matters. And then mentally, the mental stress. Focus on the good in your life. Okay, I know it's tough. My wife and I had a really hard time getting pregnant, and you just you got to find a way to focus on the good in your life. You know, your grandfather passes away. You can either be pissed off or you can be thankful that you knew him. How many people grew up and didn't know their grandfather? And that's the choice. So find a way to focus on the good in your life. The way I like to start my day is I get up and I meditate right away. I get up and then I sleep again. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I yeah. like that. <laughs> so I, get up, I give myself usually about 15, 20 minutes. I downloaded a bunch of different meditations, and we're working on guys in about probably six, ten weeks. We're going to have some of our own meditation audios that you can download. But I start my day with just meditating, just positive words and, and calming, the, calming the conscious mind. And then I like to move, just five, ten minutes or yogi, yogi, yoga. I am by far no yogi, <laughs> but just get your body moving. Okay, you have these rituals to help your body perform well and handle stress, just like a high-level athlete. Why they want to perform the best they can in a stressful environment, so they have these rituals to control their physiology. So that's what I do. I like to calm and quiet my mind. Uh, then I have affirmations I like to say, and I do my yoga, and then I start my day with usually a big thing of chlorella. I try to get all my patients on chlorella because it's multivitamin, multimineral, detoxes the body. Lots of green, get green every day, and then get lots and lots of water. Lots and lots of water, guys. And that will be absolutely, and then focus on the good. You know, if something bad in your life happens, handle it and move on. Don't tell that story to 15 other people. Handle it and move on. If you need to have a conversation with a coworker, you have it and you move on. You're done with it. You never talk about it again. Okay? So you don't keep retelling these negative stories. Some people, you know, they just can't wait to tell how AT&T screwed them over and then AT&T screwed them over and then AT&T screwed – no. Deal with it, move on, and then focus on the good in your life, whatever it is. Viktor Frankl's book, a great book, A Man's Search for Meaning, he talks about the psychiatrist in a concentration camp in Nazi Germany during World War II. And he talks about even in that situation where your freedom had been taken away from you. You could be killed at any moment. You were fed almost nothing. You were in the frozen cold, frostbitten all over. You had almost no clothes for no reason. You, had, you did not deserve this. And you were treated just terrible. And he said even in that kind of situation, there were still some people that were able to rise above it. And they were able to focus on the good and share their food. And he said if one person can go through an event like that and handle it in a positive way, then we all can handle the stressful events in our life in a positive way. So guys, do that stuff and you will see how your life starts to change. Write down a couple things you're thankful for. Write at the end of the day, talk about a few of the good things that happen and watch how this momentum starts to build in your life. Oh, huge. Protect this thing. This yeah. has the biggest impact in on every aspect of your life. So this, I mean, it's just, you can't talk about it enough and you can't focus on, uh, you know, focusing it <laughs> and for the good um, <laughs> enough if that yeah so well I'll, there's a quote i don't know who said it but if there is no enemy within the enemy without can do me no harm so guys like focus that. on that control the meditation's big you know and i'm not one here going um and floating around the room i don't mean that stuff uh just download some meditations off whatever we'll get some for you in the next few months and, and you just put that quiet the mind, put that positive stuff in every single day, write down the things you're thankful for, and I promise you, 
you cannot be thankful and pissed off at the same time. And I get sometimes it's tough. But yeah, you can't talk about it enough because it's so big. They've done studies on nursing homes. People that smiled lived on average five years longer than people that didn't smile. I, we, at a at chiropractic school, you probably remember this, uh, you got to interview these people who had lived to be over 100. This one live, lady was 110, and she said the secret is vodka and laughing. That's <laughs> what so she said. Well, I a woman, vodka. I was like, I like this lady, man. Yeah. And she said, get rid of your negative friends. They'll all be the first to die. And I remember that. And I've seen it in my patients. The ones who are always upset, they always take longer to heal. The ones with a good attitude almost always heal much faster. So controlling this. Uh, Mother Teresa, they just shown videos of Mother Teresa and her expression of love and positivity. And they tested the saliva of people before and after. And there was more immune cells in the saliva. Their immune systems are functioning at a higher level just watching this video. So the impact the mind has on everything is absolutely massive. So it's not the event. It's how you handle the event, how your perception of the event, physical, chemical, mental. Start there and just add, guys. Don't beat yourself up. Just add a little good. You know, start with maybe one day you drink only water and you add chlorella and you go for a walk and you'll start to build this momentum. All of a sudden you won't want to eat the fast food. You'll want to have nice quality food and you'll just little and invest in yourself, guys. It's worth it. Spend a little bit more money on food. Spend more money on the quality supplements. It's worth it. Okay. Over half of all bankruptcy comes from medical bills. It's expensive to get sick, guys. So invest in yourself. So, yeah, I, you know, and. I think we've given a lot of. Uh, it's a long episode. Man. Yeah, are they still there? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but it's a lot of good stuff, guys. If you can just take one thing away from it that was positive, you know, if you like it, please like it, subscribe to it, share it. If you have a friend that needs it, please share it. it could change their life. You know, little things. It's amazing just the difference, one or two little steps. And if you have, please comment under below. If you have a tool you use that we haven't mentioned to help handle the stresses of life in a positive way, please, please share that because um, you don't know. You could touch someone's life and in their life, you know, it's, sometimes it's that's what happens. You change someone's life in just that moment where you say the right thing at the right time, it connects, they resonate, and then they, they start taking action. I like it. Like So, you know, maybe uh, we're good. Scobro's out this week. What are we going to talk about next week? I thought you want to do ADHD, schools getting in session. Yeah, huge, huge. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think I can relate to hyperactivity. I, you know, knowing you, um, <laughs> you know, I don't know if you noticed him just sitting in the chair there, but not what? really. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> All right. So, yeah, we'll do that next week. Um, Have a good week, guys.